I'm staying. No, you too, Giles. I'm staying. I don't know what's got into you, Molly. Giles, please. Yes, Mrs. Ralston? What is it you wanted to say to me? Sergeant Trotter, you think that the eldest of the three boys at the farm, that he's the murderer. But you don't know that for sure, do you? We don't actually know a thing. All we've got so far is that the woman who joined her husband in the starving and ill treatment of those children has been killed. And that the woman magistrate who was in charge of placing them there has been killed. The telephone wire that links me with police headquarters has been cut. But you don't even know that. It could have just been the snow. No, Mrs. Ralston, it was cut deliberately. I saw the place just outside the back door. I see. Please sit, Mrs. Ralston. But to all the same, you don't really know. I'm going by probability, and it all points one way. Childish mentality, mental instability, desertion from the army and the psychiatrist's report. I know, and therefore it all seems to point to Christopher. But I really don't believe it is Christopher. There has to be other possibilities. Such as? Well, hadn't those children any relations at all? The mother was a drunk. She died shortly after the children were taken away from her. And what about their father? He was an army sergeant serving abroad. If he's still alive, he's probably been discharged from the army by now. You don't know where he is now? We've no information. To trace him may take some time, but I can assure you, Mrs. Ralston, the police take every eventuality into account. And so if the father was mentally unstable, then the son might, might be mentally unstable too? It's possible. And say that the father came home after being a prisoner with the Japanese, perhaps, and that he came home and he saw his wife dead and that his children had suffered some terrible experience, well, he might go off his head a bit and want revenge. Well, that's only surmise. But it's possible. Oh, yes, Mrs. Ralston, it's quite possible. So the killer might be middle-aged or even old. You know, when I said the police had rung, Major Metcalf looked frightfully upset. He really was. I saw his face. Major Metcalf. I know he seems quite nice and everything, but it, it mightn't show, might it? No, it often doesn't show at all. So therefore, it's not only Christopher who's the suspect. There's Major Metcalf as well. Any other suggestions? When I said the police had rung, Miss Paravicini did drop the poker. Miss Paravicini? I know she's quite old and foreign and everything, but... She mightn't be as old as she looks. She moves like a much younger woman, and she's definitely got too much makeup on her face. Miss Casewell notices it, too. I know how melodramatic it sounds, but what if it's a disguise? You're very anxious, aren't you, Mrs. Ralston, that it shouldn't be young Mr. Wren? Uh, he just seems so helpless somehow, and so unhappy. Well, let me tell you this, Mrs. Ralston. I've had all possibilities in mind ever since the beginning. The boy Georgie, the father, and another. There was a sister, you remember? The sister? It could have been a woman who killed Marine Lyon. With the muffler pulled up and the man's felt hat pulled well down and, well, the killer whispered, you know. It's the voice that gives the sex away. Yes, it could have been a woman. Miss Casewell? Oh, no, she looks too old. Yes, there's a very wide field, you know. Well, there's yourself, for instance. I? You seem to be about the right age. Well, you can check <laughs> No, no. Remember, Mrs. Ralston, anything you tell me about yourself, I have no means of checking at the moment. And then there's your husband. Childs, don't be ridiculous. Well, he and Christopher Wren are much of an age. Say, your husband looks older than his years, and Christopher Wren looks younger. Actual age is very hard to tell, you know. How much do you know about your husband? How much do I know about Giles? Don't be silly. You've been married how long? Just a year. And you met him where? We met at a dance in London. We went in a party. Did you meet his people? He hasn't any people. They're all dead. They're all dead? But you make it sound so wrong. His mother died when he was a baby, and his father was a barrister. But you're only telling me what he told you. Well, I suppose, but... You don't know it of your own knowledge. Yes, but... You'd be surprised, Mrs. Ralston. How many cases rather like yours we get, especially since the war... Home's broken up, family's dead. Fella says he's in the Air Force or just finished his army training. Parents killed, no relations. There's no backgrounds, and nowadays people settle their own affairs. They meet and marry. It's the parents and the relatives who used to make the enquiries before consenting to an engagement, but that's all been done away with. Girl just marries her man. 
Sometimes she doesn't find out for a year or two that he's an absconding bank clerk or an army deserter or something as equally undesirable. How long had you known Giles Ralston when you married him? Just three weeks, but... And you don't know anything about him? That's absurd. I know everything there is to know about Giles. I know exactly the type of person he is. And to say he's some homicidal maniac, well, he wasn't even in London when the murder took place. Where was he? Here? No, he went down to a sale to get chicken netting. Bring it back with him? No, it turned out to be the wrong kind. Only 30 miles from London, aren't you? ABC. An hour by train, a little longer by car. I tell you, Giles wasn't in London. Just a minute, Mrs. Ralston. Is this your husband's coat? Yes. Evening paper, yesterday's. Sold on the streets of London about 3.30 yesterday afternoon. I don't believe it. Don't you? Don't you? Molly? Oh, you startled me. Where is he? Where is he gone? Uh, who? The sergeant. He just went out that no, way. If only I could get out of here. Somehow, some way. Is, is there anywhere I can hide? In the house? Hide? Yes. Why? Because, darling, they're all so frightfully against me. They're going to say I committed these murders. Especially your husband. Never mind him. Uh, listen, Christopher, you can't go on. Running away from things all your life. Why do you say that? Well, it's true, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's... Rather true. Your name isn't really Christopher Wren, is it? No. And you're not really training to be an architect? No. Well, then why would you... Call myself Christopher Wren? Because it amused me, and they would laugh at me in school and call me Christopher Robin, Robin Wren, an association of ideas. It was hell being at school. What's your real name? We needn't go into that now. I ran away so I was my army service. It was all so beastly. I hated it. I told you I'm just like the unknown murderer. I'm just the one the specification fitted. You see, my mother, my mother. Yes, your mother. Everything would be all right if she hadn't died. She wouldn't have been able to be there for me and look after me. But Christopher, y you can't be looked after all your life. Why do you say that? You've got to grow up sometime, Chris. I wish I hadn't. Sometimes things are hard to forget. You mean you're running away from things too? Running away instead of facing them? Yes, I suppose in a way I am. You know, for only having met you yesterday, I seem to know you rather well. Yes, it's rather odd, isn't it? There seems to be sort of a sympathy between us. Well, anyway, you think I ought to stick it out? Well, frankly, what else can you do? I could pinch the sergeant's skis. I can ski rather well. <laughs> That'd be frightfully stupid. That'd be like admitting you're guilty. Sergeant Trotter already thinks I'm guilty. No, he doesn't. At least, I don't really know what he thinks. I, I hate him. I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. Who? Sergeant Trotter. He can make you think things about people. Things that aren't true, that can't possibly be true. What is all this? You see this? Yeah. What is it? A London evening paper from yesterday. It was in Giles' pocket, but he didn't go to London yesterday. Well, if he was here all day... But he wasn't here all day. He went down to get some stuff for our chickens. Well, that's all right. Perhaps he did go up to London after all. Then why shouldn't he tell me he did? Maybe with the news of these murders... But Giles didn't know about the murders. Uh, did he? Did he? <laughs> Good Lord, Molly. Surely you don't think... The sergeant doesn't think... I don't know what the sergeant thinks. And he can make you think things about people. You ask yourself questions and you begin to doubt. You're somewhere in the middle of all your friends and people you love, and suddenly you look at their faces and they're just strangers. That's what happens in a nightmare. Perhaps you don't know anybody. Perhaps everybody's a stranger. Well, I seem to be interrupting something. We were just, just talking. I, I must go to the kitchen. There's the peas and... Do let me help. No, you won't. Giles. <laughs> now really, look here. Tighter tapes aren't a very healthy thing at present. You stay out of the kitchen and you stay away from my wife. <laughs> Mr. Ralston, now You really stay away from my wife, Ren. She's not going to be the next victim. Oh. 
So that's what you think of me? Oh, I've made it pretty clear, haven't I? There's a killer loose in the house, and it seems to me that you fit the bill. I'm not the only one who fits the bill. Well, I don't see who else does. How blind are you? Or are you just pretending to be blind? I tell you, I'm worrying about my wife's safety. Yeah? Well, so am I. I'm not going to leave you here alone with her. Christopher, please go. I, I'm not going. Christopher, please, I mean it. All right, I shan't be far away. Molly, what is all this? You must be crazy. Perfectly prepared to shut yourself in with a homicidal maniac. He isn't. Oh, you've only got to take one look at him to see he's balmy. He isn't dangerous. I'd know if he was dangerous. And besides, I can take care of myself. <laughs> That's what Miss Boyle said. Don't. Oh, look here. What is there between you and that wretched boy? What do you mean by between us? You're being absolutely absurd. Oh, perhaps you've met him before. Perhaps you suggested that you could come and meet up here for the first time. All cooked up between you, wasn't it? Are you out of your mind? How dare you suggest these things? Oh, it's rather odd, isn't it, that he should come and stay in an out-of-the-way place like this? No odder than that Miss Casewell and Mrs. Boyle and Major Metcalf should. I read in the papers once that these homicidal cases have a way of attracting women. And it seems as though it were true. <laughs> How long has this been going on? Where did you first meet him? The first time I met Christopher Wren was yesterday. Oh, that's what you say. Perhaps you'd been uh, running up to London to meet him on the slide. You know perfectly well that I haven't been up to London for weeks. You haven't been up to London for weeks? Is that so? What on earth could you mean? It's quite true. Is it? Then what's this? This is a glove you were wearing yesterday. I spotted it in your coat when I was talking to Sergeant Trotter. You see what's inside? It's a London bus ticket. Oh, that... So not only did you go up to the village, you went up to London as well. Oh. I went to... Whilst I was safely away, racing around the countryside. Whilst you were racing around the countryside. Oh, come on, now admit it. You went to London. All right, I went to London. So did you. What? So did you. It's your evening paper. Where did you get a hold of this? Found it in your overcoat pocket. Oh, anyone could have put it there. Did they? No, you were in London. All right. I was in London. But I didn't go there to meet a woman. Didn't you? Are you sure you didn't? What do you mean? Don't touch me. Molly, what's the matter? Don't come near me. Molly, did you go to London to meet Christopher Wren? Don't be a fool. Of course I didn't. Then why did you go? I shan't tell you that. Perhaps now I've forgotten why I went. Molly, what's gotten into you? You're acting different all of a sudden. It's almost as if I, I, I don't even know you anymore. Perhaps you never did know me. How long have we been married? A year? You don't know what I thought or suffered, suffered before you knew me. Molly, you're crazy. All right, then I'm crazy. Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. What the hell are you talking about, Molly? Now, now, I do hope you young people aren't saying a little more than what you mean. Want to sort up to these uh, lovers' quarrels. <laughs> lovers' quarrels. That's a good one. 